right. Hi, guys. Hola. Okay, so, first of all, what a great worship service that was. Yeah. I find myself up here sometimes getting nervous, I'm like, oh, this is going too long. People are getting um, tired of it. And, you know, he might be. But sometimes, you know, there's something in here. God won't let me stop. He wants you guys to get it. And you haven't gotten it yet, so I haven't stopped yet. So that's why uh, we, I'm, I'm just I'm so grateful that you guys came here. You were ready. You participated. It was amazing. Thank you guys so much. Okay, um, for today, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to read out of the Bible the Easter story. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about what I was going to speak about this week, and I thought, okay, it's almost Easter. Let me come up with something about Easter. And then I thought, why do I have to come up with something about Easter when the whole story is right here? And we should never get tired of hearing the Easter story. I do have a few notes to talk about after I read the story. But I, I mean, God put it right here for us to read it. So I might as well read it to you guys. Okay. It's going to be a little long. Not too long, but it's, it's important. Okay? So we're starting in John chapter 19, verse 1, if you guys want to follow along with me. Okay. It says... So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover, and about the sixth hour he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. Pause for just a second. How many of you guys have heard this story before? The story of Jesus' crucifixion? Probably every single one of us in here. If we've been to church at all, we've probably heard about Jesus' death. Do you guys know, though, what happened right before this? About a week before it. Palm Sunday. We just had Palm Sunday this past Sunday. Do you know what happened on Palm Sunday? Do you guys know about that? Jesus rode into town on a donkey, and the same people that are here yelling, crucify Jesus, <coughs> kill him, laid out their coats on the dirt road so that he wouldn't get dirty. And they took palm leaves, and they waved them at him, and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. And they praised him, and they welcomed him, and they worshipped him. And then, less than a week later, what are they saying? Crucify him. Kill him. He's not our king. Okay, I'm going to continue with, with verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the Place of a Skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the center. 
Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore, the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier apart, and also the tunic, which is like the whole garment. Now the tunic was without a seam, woven from the top in one piece. They then said, they said, therefore among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. And the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be, might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on hyssop and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So we can't tell the story of Easter, which is what? Resurrection. resurrection right? We can't tell the story of Jesus' resurrection without telling the story of his death. And sometimes it's easier to read it than it is to really imagine what happened, but it was not an easy time for Jesus. Okay, we're going to um, John 20, and I'm only reading a few scriptures in here, but I want you guys to listen very carefully. Um, verse 1, So now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. I'm done reading that. Um, but it's so important that we understand what it means that Jesus died on the cross for us and that he came back. My first note is, the Easter story is really a love story. I was looking up things um, about the Easter message, trying to put something together, and, and I was really struggling because I was like, man, you can't top the, the Easter message. What am I supposed to do? And so that's when I decided I was just going to read it. But some notes that I found were really good. So the Easter story is really a love story. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. We were still sinners. Christ died for us. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to die on the cross for our sins. We hear that all the time, but I don't think we really believe it. I don't think we really know what that means. Because if we did know what that meant, we wouldn't come to church just to come to church and talk to our friends and, and laugh and mess around during worship and, and during during teaching. We wouldn't, because if we understood what that meant, if we understood how lucky we are that Jesus did that for us, Amen. we would probably have a different outlook on our own lives. We've been talking about salvation. Over and over and over again, I talked about salvation. But I realized that maybe you guys don't understand what happened in order for us to have salvation. 
Jesus died on a cross. That was not a fun way to go. If you read your Bible, he even begged God at one point. He was like, let this cup pass from me. If possible, I don't want to do it. But he did it anyway. <laughs> he did it anyway. He died for your sins. And not only did he die, but he came back three days later. And that's what we're about to celebrate is Easter. But if you don't know the history behind Easter, if you don't know what Easter means, then it's just another Sunday. It's just another, oh, we got to go to church. I'm guilty of thinking that sometimes. We have to constantly remind ourselves what Jesus did for us because it can become ordinary. When we hear about it so many times when we come to church, and that's what is always taught. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Amen. Jesus died so you can be saved. You need to be saved so you can have eternal life. Those are the things we always teach, and they become ordinary because we hear them so often. So sometimes we have to remind ourselves how extraordinary these things actually are. <clears throat> they're extraordinary and they're free. They're laid right out for us to take them. Um, I have one last point and I'll let you guys go. Uh, Romans 12, 4 through 5. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Christians everywhere are connected to each other through the love of Jesus. Because Jesus died, because he rose again, we are able to be connected to every single person that is in his family, which means every single person that is saved. We're connected. We have these people that we should be able to talk to, that we should be able to rely on. And that's just a bonus of everything else that Jesus did for you. He could have just died for you and came back, and that's amazing. He didn't have to connect you with people. But like my dad said before I got up here, um, you need people. You can't do it on your own. You shouldn't have to do it on your own. It's hard. So I'm gonna, I just want to leave you with this. Every single day we should remind ourselves of what Jesus did for us. But Easter is a day that we set aside to celebrate it. So I want to encourage you for the remainder of this week um, to really get into your Bible. Get into your prayer and, and <coughs> learn more about Jesus if you don't know a lot about his story. Learn about him. That's what we got these for. Bibles. And I bet if you don't have one, we can get one for you. And I, I want to see you guys here on Sunday because Sunday is a celebration of Jesus' life. Amen. And I want to see you guys here because I think, actually, no, I know if you come expecting something, something's going to happen. Amen. Like tonight, you came, you expected something, you expected it to be um, full of energy and, and great worship, and it was. Yes. And I want you guys to know that you have all that power. You guys decide what you get yes. when you come to church. You decide. And I hope you'll decide to come on Sunday, and I hope you'll decide to learn more about Jesus, and I hope that you'll decide to ask Jesus into your heart. That's the ultimate goal. Thank you, guys. That's all I have for you tonight. Um.